Hey guys, Corey here, the art archaeologist. So, um, I just came out with the sprayed leaves video inspired by Susan Taylor Brown and Jibid Neary and ended up with amazing results with the stack hack. So I wanted, I was laying in bed the other night thinking about it and I was thinking about how um, Sue O oh on that video commented how it might work with onion skin. She was talking about how it may work with onion skin. And um, somebody was mentioning fabric too. I think it was Sue O oh again. So um, I could be mistaken about that. But I got a piece of muslin here and it's big enough to make a journal cover out of. And then I've got my big Walmart tub here because some of the, now I'm not able to find the smaller grates at the Dollar Tree. I went to get some more sets for the eco dyeing the other day and all they had were these big ones. So I had to switch out of my kitty litter for this because all my smaller ones are being taken up by eco dyeing right now. But um, the onion skin, I do have a package. I got this package of paper at an auction a couple weeks ago and it's like onion skin. It might be onion skin. It's definitely vintage printer paper, but it was packaged in such a way that you could tell that it was sold in bulk to like an office supply company and it didn't exactly say onion skin, but it's got that translucency to it. So I threw a page of this in here. So I've got the muslin, the onion skin. I'm going to do four, four printer sheets, four mixed media sheets, and I'm gonna sandwich everything with watercolor paper here. All of these I cut to eight and a half by 11, the ones that weren't already that size. And my idea here, I'm gonna make three videos, and I've already shown how to do it in the first, in the sprayed leaves video, so I'll spray one sheet in these all three of these videos just to show you how I stack stuff and then I'm going to come back and show you the reveal. I've decided to do this video is going to be feathers and leaves so I want and I'm going to use my Lindy's sprays and my distress oxides and all those sprays that I have. I'm just going to get a random mix together and do a few different color combinations. I'm only going to do one kit with feathers and leaves and I'm pulling another page out of Susan Taylor Brown's book. This is a bucket of um, used leaves from my last eco dye kit and Susan does this all the time and she gets great results using these leaves. I just um, soaked them in water like she does to kind of I do it to get rid of the dye so um, she I think she does it to keep them supple of course so you want to get rid of the dye and keep them supple so I've got some bigger feathers here and then I've got some smaller ones and I pulled them all apart they were all really tight and snug and I pulled them apart because you get in my opinion you get much more interesting prints with them loose like this on the paper. So I've only got a few big ones like this and I'm using all white because I don't want the dyes to interfere with the sprays and I'm concerned they will. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the white feathers this time. And then the next two videos, this one's going to be feathers and leaves. The next two are going to be stencils and leaves, and then I'm going to do um, gears and leaves. And also, a couple things. These are all water activated. So, oh, and I ran into something that I wanted to tell you guys about. I went to scan those other um, sprayed leaf papers I did, and I used the distress oxides in that video, and the papers came out very chalky and it rubbed off on my hands when I was done with them. So the reason I bring that up is because I want to make sure that you know like for my scanner 
I wanted to protect the whiteboard that is on the door when you put your scanner door down. So I put the print on the scanner glass and then I put a clean thick piece of cardstock paper on top of the print and then close the door just to protect because I ended up really having to clean my scanner after scanning those so keep that in mind and then let me grab the sprays and I shall return. Also again I will be using alum water as always. Be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and put some gloves on and I, I want to start using a little bit more of a limited palette for these uh, kits here. Just three or four colors is really a lot. Um, does plenty. So this is one of my favorite um, Lindy Stamp Gang sprays. It's called Moon. It's a Moon Shadow Mist and it's called Treasure Island Turquoise and it's really really beautiful. I'm not sure if the sprayer is working but we know how to work around that. And then I'm going to be using a Lindy Stamp Gang Starburst Seagrass Green. And then I've got, I just recently picked this up, Distress Spray Stain Pumice Stone. And um, I got turned on to this color by Robin McClendon. This is one of her favorite colors. She uses the ink pad of this pumice stone. And it's a real beautiful, um, subtle gray type color. And then I thought, and I don't know about this. I was looking for something a little more subtle in my collection and couldn't find anything. So I may throw some of this tarnished brass distress spray stain in too. This might just spice it up a tiny bit, but I really am looking for a muted calm down palette on this kit here. So as always, Go ahead and squirt my paper down on both sides so, to avoid the curling. And uh, Susan and I were commenting on, Susan Taylor Brown that is, we were commenting on um, whether or not to spray both sides of the paper because it, they, they got so dark on the last kit. So I think I still want to spray both sides. I think I just want to maybe use a more muted palette. And of course you'll want to remove your dog and human hair. <laughs> I'm just going to do this one page to show you. Well, I'm really happily surprised with that spray bottle. Ooh, this one's working too. This color is... I love this color here, this Treasure Island Turquoise, and I'm going to end up needing to replace it. Now the metallic distress spray stains have the mixing ball inside, so I'll just throw a little bit of that in there. Wow, that's pretty powerful. I'm going to try to break that up some with the pumice stone. Oh my goodness, this ought to be exciting to see how all this comes out. Now I only do the one side on the bottom sheet of course because the, the back side of this is not really going to be relevant. Now what I like to do is let's just go ahead and grab a little one and a big one. We'll see how these print. These bigger feathers I'm concerned about because they don't lie as flat as the littler ones. I think you might have better luck with the smaller feathers. We're just going to have to see what happens. Now I'm going to reach into my mucky leaf batch. And these, these are time consuming, so you're going to want to set aside, you know, a couple hours to do these kits because they really do take a bit of time. That's why I'm only going to do the one page with you and then um, shut it down and just show you the reveal. I'm going to throw that in there like that and then maybe bounce this there. Okay, so there's our first page. So I'm going to go with a mixed media sheet because I've got this thick feather here and I want to really get it 
smush down. So here's what I like to do. I'm not going to use any of the metallic on this. I'm really, look at that pumice stone. Isn't that gorgeous? Forgive my little dog. He's scratching away under the table. So let's just do the pumice stone and some of this really muted out seagrass green. Probably going to clog my bottle the way I'm shaking it. I just don't have all day to swirl my bottles. <laughs> okay, getting some kind of different coloring in there. And then I like to flip it over just like before. I, I am going to do both sides of color. I just want to get a lot of color. I think using more subtle colors might help. Um, I got to say that the melted chocolate dilutions after sitting in this process, it really came out more rusty orangey than it did brown. And I tend to have that happen with some of my browns, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Let's see if this is any thinner. Oh, and there it goes. Clogging the sprayer. Yep. So I just take it out. Good thing I put gloves on. But you guys get the idea. This is the last sheet I'm going to show you here. And it is good to have your gloves with the alum. I don't know if it's toxic. I, you know, I get it in the spice section of my grocery store. And I mix it with hot water to make sure it dissolves. So I think because of where I get it, I feel safe. But at the same time, I think it's a good idea to wear gloves. At least you're not using any powders. You know what I mean? So you're not breathing in powders because it's all sprays. Okay, so you guys get the idea of this. I'm going to go ahead and put all this kit together and then I'll come back. It's probably going to be two to three weeks for me, two to three seconds for you. I'll be back. Okay guys, I've been thinking about this every single day since I wrapped this up. It's been about, I don't know, eight or nine days since I put this kit together and I've been, it's been really dry here. So I think it's dry and ready to be opened. I'm so excited to see how this turns out and I've been thinking I've got some more inspiration for a couple more stacked paper kits so I'll be um, doing even more fun stacked papers while the weather is nice okay so I'm hoping this is dry if it's wet I'm gonna have to close it back up and wait Well, it feels totally dry. That's kind of an interesting first page there. Let's see what else we can come up with here. Oh, okay, so we got kind of a ghost print. So then this says to me not to use these big feathers because they're kind of bowed. And even though I tied that together really tight, as you could see, this did not get pushed down enough, so I my solution for this would to be, be to use smaller feathers with a smaller uh, stem. I don't know what the word is for that. <laughs> Quill. Let's see what we've got. Oh, that's a lovely print there. Make sure I have it close enough. Yeah, that did not touch. So this is um, a very good experiment in the regards of making sure to use feathers that are smaller because it, it prevented the leaves from um, getting a good print as well, it looks like to me. Hopefully this kit's still going to be usable. Oh no, it's tearing. Ah. Oh, okay, that's a bummer. 
I'm gonna glue this down right now. I've got my little Mod Podge mat here, which luckily I just happened to have it at the table. I was not expecting, didn't even think about it, but I'm just gonna glue that right down right now so it's a little better. That's kind of disappointing. But I still like this page. It's got a lot of color. What's really funny is I never used any pink sprays on any of my sprayed kits, and yet I get pink in every one of them. So just know that that may happen to you. So here's that one. Okay, here we go. Yeah, still didn't get a perfect print. And this is a smaller feather, so maybe even using even smaller ones or maybe snipping the end off, which I like to have the end in the print. So I don't know if I really love that idea, but it definitely interfered with getting all of the leaves to adhere to. And this could be the other big feathers in the kit that are interfering with these leaves as well. This one might um, be a result of this feather underneath it. So it's definitely worth it. I think I might try to make another kit with smaller feathers. I will have to pick some up. Oh, and then we've got the sticking with this printer paper, but I like to use the printer paper because it takes the media so well, but at the same time, it sticks. So I've got a little tearing. Hopefully the tearing will just happen on the edges, which is easily resolved. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we got a little tearing. Very interesting page. I'm, I've got to say I'm a little disappointed. I had really high hopes. Here, I'll get my hand out of the way. I had really high hopes for these pages, and I think these really thick feathers kind of messed up everything in this kit, and then I accidentally tore it too darn much. That's okay, though. I did get some good leaf impressions here. I really think these big feathers are interfering. Come on, be good. Oh, that one's kind of nice. It's the, this is like the ghost print to leaf kit, kind of, the ghost print leaf and feather kit. So yeah, that's a good lesson to learn from this that maybe it's really best to use flatter stuff because this three, the more three dimensional, the more problems you're gonna have. I'm always wanting to print seashells and I just haven't figured it out yet and I haven't looked for it on YouTube it's I'm sure it's probably been done and done successfully oh my goodness we got a lot of sticking going on here come on come on at least the really bad parts are the edges. Oh, I don't want to speak too soon. Now it's sticking in the middle. Oh, no. So this experiment is valuable because of that. Okay, we had a big tear right here happen. Hmm. This is mixed media paper. I can tell by the thickness of it. This side is pretty neat. There's a lot of shimmer again. So this is really unfortunate here. This has to be printer paper. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, I'm just getting these ghost prints. I'm telling you, these quills are just too thick for this finish. Which you might be able to, well, I don't even know how you would do that because I have found with all work like this that your, your leaves, whatever you're printing, needs to be fused to the paper very wet so that it, the print will come out clean. I do know that. So 
I don't even know if doing this individually with those big thick feathers would work. There, you know, you could probably shave this down with a razor knife and get it a lot more flat that way. This is really quite nice, even though we had some tearing. Okay, this is printer paper, so I know I'm in for it here. It's okay though. Oh, yay. We'll just soldier up and do it. Oh, that worked out well. I think that's payoff for having a good attitude. <laughs> wow, okay, a lot of really nice gold and a lot of really cool textures. There's a few leaf prints in here and a little feather print, but um, the, the, the variation of color and texture is still really pretty. I like it. Oh, I wanted to mention to you guys, this paper is really um, wrinkled and I just had a question about ironing and I did address it in the last sprayed kit that I did, but I'm gonna go ahead and just make a video real quick of how to iron the eco dive pages versus this, um, the sprayed paper pages. And then you'll know um, both ways that I do it and hopefully that'll help because I might as well just show you. That'd be easiest. Wow, I love the gold on this leaf, the stem of leaves. I wanna like Mod Podge these and maybe preserve them. Oh no, they're really sticking. Please come off. See, I spoke too soon about my attitude being so great. <laughs> come on now, please, please, please. Oh no, oh no. It's inevitable. It's gonna tear. Okay. Oh. Still beautiful, even though they tore. But I wish they wouldn't have torn, and I hope I can get these little chunks off. They're coming off pretty easily here. I would maybe do a little, let me see if I can scrape at it with my bone folder. Okay, so here's a new issue with this. So I'm gonna deal with this later so you guys don't have to sit there and watch me fiddle with it. Okay, that one came off pretty good. Oh, good. Oh, we got, this is a nice page, but we had that happen. Let's see here. Oh, that didn't come out near as well. Yeah, I really think the thicker feathers interfered with this kit for sure. I would definitely um, guess that to be the culprit. You just got to use flat stuff. And if there's a way you can flatten what you're using, that is great. I say do it because you already got to deal with peeling your pages apart no matter what here. Oh, that came out pretty good. Wow. Well, the textures and the colors are nice. Getting some of these colors wet really changes the look of them, though. I will say that. I'm a little disappointed. This one's a little better. I'm a little disappointed because I really want to clearly see the feathers, so... I just did a couple of eco die kits recently using feathers and uh, I'll be putting those out in the next month or so. I've got some other stuff in front of those. So, but they, to eco die feathers is a very good idea. I am here to tell you, wow, that's really pretty with the shimmer. I'm gonna try to seal these with Mod Podge and put them in some kind of a project and just leave all that. That almost looks like a little leopard print on those, leave, those leaves. Okay. Yeah, this page came out nice. I'm impressed. Oh, now we're to the fabric. Well, at least the paper's easily coming away from the fabric. Here's this other feather. Oh. 
You can barely see it. I like the subtlety, but I want to know that it's a feather. So I think this can be successful. I just really think that it's the feather issue. I totally do. I guess I can quit saying it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I really wasn't expecting much. These leaves, I'm going to seal a bunch of these for future projects. I was not expecting leaf prints on this fabric, but I was definitely hoping, and it looks like I did not get my way, but still really beautiful shimmery fabric. I almost like the edges better than the center. Look at how rusty the edges came out. So, Maybe this isn't the best way to do fabric, but look at this. You can get so much color. And that's, I think that's a really pretty journal cover piece of fabric. Yeah, bummer. I think these really, really undermined this kit here, batch. I'll hurry and get all these off. These leaves, though, are beautiful. Even with the tears and the imperfections. Oh my goodness, I love both sides. This has a lot of green shimmer on the back side. So, you know, there's, I always, even if something doesn't quite work out the way I want it to, I just learn so much from doing this, and that makes it worth it, even if I don't get good product out of it, which I think there's good usable stuff in here. It just, I learned to, you know, the flatter the better, so. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that is a little treasure, right? there. Oh, I just love all the spattered gold on there. Wow. We, and then it's got all that green shimmer on it. These are worth, I don't know the best way to handle these. I think, um, I think I might put them in my press kit, my leaf press for now and then seal them in with Mod Podge onto a mixed media projects, which I plan on using a lot of this stuff this winter. And if you guys are getting sick of all the eco dye videos, I apologize, but I must do it. And I might as well film it and show you because this season is so short. So I've really got to um, do it while I have the chance. So this came out pretty interesting, this piece of fabric. And being able to collage on top of this fabric is going to be fun, too. So there's the fabric. Wow, these leaves are turning out to be a bigger treasure to me than the papers. <laughs> Look at that gold. Oh, wow. I'm carefully just setting them in here, just so you know, I got this little tub here at the Dollar Tree. They are great for um, plastic organizational products. They have so many, look at that little rose hip leaf cluster with the gold spatter. You could almost take a set of leaves and now's your chance to do it. Oh, please come off and just spatter them with your sprays. <gasps> oh, this is gonna be, make me sad. It's still a treasure to me, but I would have preferred it to be intact. Now the aspen leaves are pretty strong. They held up, look at that. <laughs> so we're going treasure hunting and I'm finding treasure where I didn't expect to find treasure. I love when that happens. Isn't that just why we do art in the first place? Yeah, I really think these feathers, I think it can be done and I think they can come out beautifully. I just think it has to be, I have to retry it and, and film it and show you. This is beautiful here. There's a lot of veining detail. 
Okay, here we go with this printer paper. I'm developing a love-hate relationship with the printer paper because, oh, you know what? I think this is that onion skin type paper right here. What? It's in here somewhere. But what I was saying about the love-hate relationship, the printer paper is amazing because it holds the media so beautifully. Look at that. But it sticks and it just gives you grief trying to get the pages apart. But what really amazes me is peeling this page off and having it, all the colors stay intact. It's just amazing to me that that works like that. Wow, look at these leaves. I wonder if we can save this one. Oh, oh, yay. And look at the print. That came out really nice. So these are like grunge gold leaves. So if you guys don't care about the paper, which I don't know how you couldn't, I mean, you're watching this because you love paper, right? So I would do this and really squirt down your leaves with the, um, with some gold and silver and some bronze and copper. And then you will have both. And my leaf press, is just a couple pieces of plywood with um, big long bolts like that and wing nuts and washers. That's all it is. And then I stack um, cardstock. I use cardstock because it's nice and thick and if there's any moisture in your leaves or flowers, it will absorb it beautifully for you. Look at that. Oh, I really am amazed. Um, these are pretty crispy, so putting them in my press may do some damage to some of them, but I'm going to do it anyway. And if I have to throw a few out, I'll just, you know, figure that's the material cost of doing it. So remember how I tore all these apart? You can leave them straight. I just like this because I think they print better. They look so messy and unruly, but they print better. So we got some good little prints in here. Oh, looks like a little bug. Oh, I don't want that to happen. I really try hard to make sure and shake all my leaves out before I bag them up and get all the critters safely off. Yeah. Oh, now, okay, this paper feels different. This is that vintage printer paper. So this is the, um, I, I was talking about this paper in a different video, I think, or maybe it was the beginning of this one. Um, it's been, you know, eight or nine days since I've done this, but, um, this is definitely that vintage printer paper. So I don't know if this is actually onion skin paper or if it's just vintage printer paper, but I'm telling you, if you have onion skin, use it because look at how this paper held all this media. I think you'll be really, really happy um, doing this with some onion skin paper included into your kit here. Look at all the colors. Now this is a much better print of the feather. This is way more what I'm looking for, but it's still not quite as much as I would like. Now that I'm really not all that thrilled about. I think that kind of got ruined. Like this is a beautiful little collage element, but I'm not all that thrilled with this. I do like all of the grainy texture. I always like that, but kind of a bummer. Not very much definition going on there. Okay, this is mixed media paper from the feel of it. I can promise you it is. This has just lovely shimmer. Ooh, look at the silver on that leaf. So if you like silver, this is right up your alley. Now, these feathers printed, this one printed beautifully. This is what I'm looking for, is this outlining of those beautiful wispy hairs. 
and I got a lot of it with this big one, but that just, see, I know that's the culprit, and here's how I know, because it just didn't, the rest of the feather could not adhere to the page, and then you end up not getting a print. So your stuff really has to like be suctioned to your page for it to work, for sure. Okay. So here's the last page. Got a really beautiful wispy print on this side and nothing over here, but look at that. Wow. And a lot of these leaves are flat enough that they're going to do just fine. I'm not going to bother with these because they're so bent and it's just not going to work with those. In fact, they might end up destroying some of the ones that otherwise wouldn't be destroyed. But look at that. Whoa. This is probably my favorite part of this whole deal. <laughs> are the leaves. In fact, they are for sure. Not probably. So then, of course, this is the watercolor. And I just used um, a less expensive brand of watercolor paper because I'm simply trying to avoid getting the great marks into these other pages. That's why I'm using that, okay? So it's a good idea to do a watercolor page. And then, of course, you only get the one side. And, and then I... I been lately just bumping following it up with a Canson mixed media thicker page and then putting my printer paper and my vintage printer paper more inside so there's some good stuff in here there's some very nice usable stuff and thank you so much for stopping by and of course if you have not subscribed I invite you to as always and as always I invite you to please like this video because it helps me with the YouTube algorithm and I'm going to be doing more paper sprayed kits and I'm going to get on it because I have to wait at least a week. They have to sit at least a week but I'm in a dry climate so it works well and then um, come on back for all the fun stuff we're going to be doing and I hope you give this a shot and please let me know how you like doing this. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below and again Again, I will be doing that ironing video very soon. And as soon as I get it done, I'm not going to make it a treasure hunting Tuesday or Saturday. I'm just going to throw it up as soon as I get it done so that you guys will have it ASAP. Okay, I'm going to film it while I iron these sheets so that you can see how that works. So thanks for stopping by and have a great day.